isn't God good? I said, isn't God good? Hallelujah. During our Sunday school lesson, we talked about Jesus commanding the wind and the waves. And the disciples said, what manner of man is this who can command the wind and the waves to be still? And I'm here today to tell you that banner of man is Jesus. He's mighty to save in your life. He's mighty to heal. He's mighty to deliver. He can command the winds and the waves, but he can command your struggle to be still as well. Hallelujah.
this world we had our hope, we would be men most miserable. I thank God that this world is not our home. We are not living for our life here, but we are living what we're doing, what we go through, is so that we can live again. Not for here, but we have eternity waiting on us. All of the pain, all of the suffering, all of the anxiety, every tear, is gonna be worth it all because we are gonna get out of this place. One day, you have to have an eternal perspective. You have to believe that one day, one day, he's coming back for you. He's coming back for me. This world is not our home. You are not suffering. You are not hurting in vain. The trial that came to take you out, it is not in vain. You may have been neglected. You may have been rejected. You may have been abandoned. Your mother and your father could have forsaken you. Oh, but I thank God we have a God that will take you up. Don't let anybody leave the same way that they came in, Lord God. 
in the name of Jesus. There's somebody here, Lord, that needs your precious gift of the Holy Spirit. They need the power, Lord, so that they can walk right, so that they can live right, so that they can do right, Lord God. And there's somebody here, Lord God, that has been baptized in your name and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, but they're struggling in their walk, Lord. They need you to know, Lord God, that you still love them, Lord. They need to know, Lord God, that you are still with them, Lord God. Heal someone right now. Heal them in their mind. Heal them in their body, Lord. Touch right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We know that you can, and we know that you will. Let someone, Lord God, move down out of their way right now. Move the enemy out of the way right now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, fall on us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit fall right now. In the name of Jesus, oh, Lord God, speak, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Walk up and down the aisles. Move in the aisles. Move in the aisles. Touch right now. Heal right now. Heal right now. Deliver right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord. There is healing in your name, Lord. Deliverance in your name, Lord. Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. 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 If you prayed that prayer, just give them praise. Just tell them thank you. Just say thank you. Just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. It's all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I welcome you to Apostolic Life Faith. I thank you for joining us on today. My only ask is you let God do what he wants to do in your life on today. Let him move you. Let him touch you. Let him change you. This is a place of hope. This is a place of life. So on behalf of myself, and on behalf of our amazing church family, and on behalf of our pastor in his absence, Suffragan Bishop Philip Johnson, we welcome you, we welcome you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, God bless you.
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be in his house one more time. It's a blessing to be able to praise him, to be able to worship him, to be able to lift him up. Oh, we magnify him. Oh, we glorify him. Oh, we honor him on today just for being Jesus, just for being Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise you. Because you're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. You're worthy of all the praise. Amen, amen, amen. How many of you are just happy to be in the house of the Lord? One more time. Amen. His presence is here. And I heard it said that in his presence is the fullness of joy. We've got reason to be joyful on today. Amen. We shouldn't come into this place. Amen. And walk out the same way that we came in. We might have walked in a little hopeless today. We might have walked in today feeling that there was hardly any reason to live, to go on. Happiness might have been distant from us today if we were being truthful, if we were being honest. But I'm thankful that this is the place where change can happen for you on today. I mean, you can leave this place a changed man, a changed woman, a changed boy, a changed girl. Amen. And God can make an everlasting impression on your life. Amen. If you just have a reason, a mind to give it to him today, whatever burden you're carrying, whatever worry, whatever fear, whatever has plagued you on today, God is able to take that. Amen. And to give you a story of how he can change your life. Can we say amen? Amen. Well, we want to continue to move on with our services on today. And we don't want to labor the hour. We are going to go ahead and turn it over, amen, to our dear sister Katrina, who is going to lead us in our offering on today. And so if you can prepare yourselves, amen, for this time of giving, why don't you go ahead and just begin to prepare yourselves as we turn the mic over. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen. Again, it is a blessing to be in his house amongst his people, amen. We just thank and praise the Lord for all that he has done. We ask, like uh, Elder Aaron said, if you would just prepare yourselves to uh, give into the offering. We're going to get ready to give our offering. I do believe they'll be posting on the screens here how uh, the ways that we give here in our church. Amen. Let's just remember um, that we can't beat God's giving. Amen. Amen. And anything that you give unto the Lord sacrificiously, he will give it back to you. Amen. Amen. We don't beg people to give here in this church. We've never been a begging church. We just ask that you give according to the way the Lord has blessed you. Amen. We just want you to know that everything you give here goes right back into the ministry here for the upbuilding of the kingdom, both in this local assembly and abroad. Uh, we know that the other day, Friday, we had our foreign missions uh, telethon I don't know how that ended up but uh, the Lord wants to save and do a great work in other countries as well not just who we see every day there are souls out there and 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 people out there that really want to be saved and touched so we just ask that you give you give and we thank you in advance for your giving we're gonna bow our heads and bless the offering and then we will follow the leading of our PMAs in just a second. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you for being just a great God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being a need meter and a way maker. We thank you for being just the savior of our souls, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your house, Lord, to give you the thanks that is due unto your name. We praise you, Lord, for this offering that we are receiving, Lord, for the upbuilding of your kingdom here in this local assembly and abroad, Lord. We ask right now, Lord Jesus, that you would bless every giver. We, we ask that you would bless those that are in the house 
and those that are even watching online that, that give in this ministry, Lord Jesus. We pray that you bless them just the same. Even those that have a mind to give, Lord, but don't have it, Lord, we ask that you just open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing, Lord, that they don't have room enough to receive, Lord. We ask that you be glorified, Lord, in all things. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. We can stand. We can stand. And at this time, we're going to follow. If everybody can, uh, both sides can face the altar walls, and the PMAs will direct you in the way that you should go. Thank you. We have our announcements. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. These are your morning announcements. Just a reminder that there has been a schedule change for the men's Celebrate Life Recovery. Um, CLR will take place every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, if you have any questions, you can see Deacon Jamar Riley or Deacon Marcellus Harris. And then our women's Celebrate Life Recovery will still take place Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. If you are interested in joining, you may see Sister Kelly Jo. Also, our prayer chain is still going. If you are interested in joining the brothers and sisters in prayer, please take a moment to fill in your name and the sign on the sign-up sheet, which is located in the vestibule. We also want to remind you of our youth chats, which take place every Friday at 7 p.m. Um, those are for ages four all the way up through college age. So parents, if you have any young people, um, you can send them here Fridays at 7 p.m. Or young people, if you are interested in joining, you can always meet us here at 7 p.m. on Fridays. And those are all of your announcements. God bless you. Amen. Let us put our hands together for these announcements. And we thank God for everybody that has contributed, amen, and taken part in our giving. We know that the Lord will pour out a blessing that is more than enough room for us to receive if we are just obedient, amen, in our giving. And we know that the Lord desires our obedience, the best kind of blessing plan is an obedience plan and so we thank god for you you and you amen and we are going to prepare to go before amen you in the word of the lord today and we are just so thankful for this opportunity to do so we know that there are many amen who could stand behind the sacred desk and provide a word from the lord Amen. But I'm grateful that the lot has fallen on me on this morning. Amen. And we have a very, very, very powerful, capable, amen, and wonderful pastor, amen, who is traveling today to do some work, amen, down in Jackson, amen, our very own Suffragan Bishop, Philip Johnson. Amen. We have to get used to saying that. From some time we have said district elder, amen. We call him pastor, amen. But the best thing about our pastor is that he is humble and you can call him brother, amen. And he will not try to correct you, amen. He is just fine with that. And we have a wonderful first lady, amen, who is here with us today. We thank God for her. I'm thankful that the Lord touched her body. Amen. Allowed her to be here on today. We know that we have many who have been dealing with sicknesses from colds and flus to viruses, uh, stomach bugs. We just don't know what's going around, uh, but it seems to be going around nonetheless. I know that uh, COVID had uh, come in close contact with some here. So we are just thankful that the Lord has allowed us to be here on today. And for those who may not be feeling well, who may be feeling ill still and are watching online, we are praying for you just the same. We ask that God would touch your body and that he would lift you up and that he would bring you back to the house of God at the appointed time. And so uh, we don't want to uh, delay any longer. We are just going to go ahead and first turn to the book of Ecclesiastes. 
Amen. If you would be so kind to turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, we are going to read two passages of scripture today. First, starting out in Ecclesiastes chapter number one. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter number one. And we will also be reading in Colossians chapter number three, verses number one through four. Colossians chapter number three, verses number one through four. Amen. We thank you, Jesus, just for this opportunity to be in his house. Oh, God, we thank you, and we praise you for being a mighty God. We thank you for speaking to us today, for providing this word, Lord Jesus. We ask you, oh, God, that it would strengthen somebody, that it would loose the bound, that it would set the captive free, that you would give us a new focus, a greater pursuit and a greater priority, Lord. We ask you, O oh God, today that you would touch those that are listening here in this sanctuary, as well as those that are listening via the live stream. We pray, O oh God, that you would touch every man, every woman, every boy and every girl. Lord, let your word have course on today. Let it move, Lord Jesus, that it would prick the hearts of somebody to repent of their sins, to believe that salvation is for me, to go down in the waters of baptism in Jesus' name and to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, we thank you for everything that you have done for us already. We thank you for being a mighty God. We thank you for being an everlasting Father, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace. Oh God, we pray that you would have your way. Throw your weight around this room even, oh God, right now. And let your blood cover, let your blood protect. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter number one, verses number one through three, and it reads, The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun. And now turning to the scripture in the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter number three and verses number one through four. And it reads, if ye then being risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid or preserved with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Can we say amen for the reading of the word of the Lord on this morning? Amen. I just wanted to come to you from the topic as you are taking your seat. Focus, pursue, and prioritize heaven. Focus, pursue, and prioritize heaven. It is something to be said today that church attendance really has gone down over the years. Some would put emphasis on the fact that we have dealt with COVID. But when you really think about COVID, COVID is now four years ago. And some churches have never opened their doors again. Some churches have dropped tremendously in attendance. We know that for quite some time, there were some churches that could have opened their doors, but decided not to. Amen. The focus, the emphasis, the thought to place prominence, importance, or significance on God has really taken a bad seat. There are many today who 
won't even take out the time to pray at the dinner table. It almost seems as though talking to God is a foreign thing for some. Just having conversation and saying that I'm blessed for some almost seems awkward. But when I think about the goodness of God, when I think about all that he has done, simply some of the ways that he has made, the fact that we have breath in our lungs right now, it gives me a greater reason, gives me a greater hope, gives me a greater longing after to live for him. I've heard it said that focus has to do with the center of interest. One might say that is placing particular attention to an activity. You could also say that it is placing prominence, importance, or significance on a particular idea, thought, action, or way of life. I thought it really something as I was taking a brief watch at the Masters Golf Tournament. Some of us may partake in that, and some of us may not. But I thought it very interesting, the fact that Tiger Woods, at 48 years old, has brought himself to the Masters Tournament one more time. And as a young man who grew up playing golf, I had the pleasure of watching Tiger Woods even in person, along with the television as well. But in watching him this time, there was something that struck particular with me that was different in times past. It almost seemed as though he just had a stronger focus this time around. It seems as though he was unbothered by anything or anyone that was on the golf course. As a matter of fact, if you really watched his face and his body language, it was uh, determination. It was a laser-like uh, focus. There was really nothing, it seemed, between him and the golf course. And perhaps thousands and thousands of people find a way to walk the golf course as he plays, and you can hear the patrons yelling out various encouraging phrases, but he was unshaken. And this may seem far-fetched for some. You may be asking, preacher, how does this relate to the message today? Well, my brothers and sisters, amen, if we are going to make it to heaven, we are going to have to focus on God unlike any other. And while it appears that Tiger Woods may have a focus on his golf game like any other, Amen. The only thing that he may be pursuing in this time is a green jacket or the championship. But my focus, our focus, has to go beyond something that is so temporary. When we look at this life, amen, I take particular emphasis on Solomon, the son of David and Bathsheba. Amen. Solomon came after David had stolen Bathsheba from Uriah. And it was Solomon, amen, that wrote this book of Ecclesiastes. He was anointed to be king over Israel while his father David yet lived on the throne. And we can read in the scriptures where Solomon had received a blank check from God. Amen. Imagine yourself receiving a blank check from God today, what would you ask for? What would you value? What do you find important? What do you find that is worth the sacrifice? Is it something that I truly long after? But Solomon, Solomon, when he could have asked for anything, amen, Solomon said, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, that is Israel. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? Solomon, in this blank paycheck, could have asked for riches. He could have asked for wealth. He could have asked for honor. 
the life of his enemies. He could have asked for long life for himself. But at this time, Solomon had a mind to ask for what was needed to care for the people of Israel. But God, amen, in seeing his answer, not only granted Solomon wisdom and knowledge, but he also granted him the things that he did not ask for. He granted him riches. He granted him honor. And he granted him wealth unlike any other king or leader in times before. This is why, this is why when we read the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon can speak with veracity. He can speak with authenticity and spiritual wisdom when he says, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. The word vanity meaning without value or no use. In another place, Solomon says, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. In other words, it is the pursuits of man in this life that will gradually erode us when we pursue after the things that are of no eternal value. It can destroy a man or a woman. It can run us down. Just think about the times when we have worked all day and we're tired. You can barely keep your head up. Seems like all you long after while you're on the job is just to get in bed and you need some rest. Some people today are working so much that they don't even bother to attend church. Some are spending so much time trying to get to a financial status that there is no opening of the word of the Lord. Amen. Working day in and day out, 80, 100 hours a week. Amen. And truly not making any time for God. Some excuses arise. I've got to pay for my cars. I've got to pay for that boat. I've got to pay for my house, my second house. And I've got to pay for an RV. But it's working and, and paying for all that temporary stuff keeping me from God. Is it really worth keeping up with the Joneses at the expense of staying on top of my walk with God? Do I have heaven in the forefront or is my mind solely focused on my next endeavor in this life? Solomon himself had 10,000 stalls of horses and chariots, much like the vehicles that we have today. He had po uh, property worth some 30 to $40 billion or more in today's time. He was a collector of rare and fine beauty. He had all the Hermes, the Armani, the Versace, the Balenciaga, the Valentino, the Gavinci, uh, all those famous brands, Cartier of his time. There was no lack when it came to what valuables he could obtain. Solomon, he lacked no companionship. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He, got them from all four corners of the earth. The same women which came to him with their ideology and their false gods, the ones God warned him about and eventually caused him to fall. But before he fell, Solomon, the writer of 10,000 Proverbs and his Psalms numbered 1,001, wrote, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Five times he repeats vanity, which would let us know of its importance. The pursuits of this life are of no value. Vanity is giving up everything and getting nothing in return. Jesus warns us of the cares of this life and the surfeiting. There are just some things that are out there that are no good for us. And if we give them too much heed or too much attention, at the end of the day, it will corrupt us. 
Man, money can corrupt. Power corrupts. Notoriety corrupts. Fame corrupts. But what about God? Amen. It can be that we may pursue notoriety and fame. If I could just get some friends, some followers, some likes, some clout, or some attention, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? We may pursue after money and riches. If I can just line my bank account, live in the mansion, drive a luxurious car, and be clothed in the finest thread, threads, I work harder and harder, and I see that they take more and more. I try to stay on top, but it seems like the more I try to stay on top of everything going on around me, the further I fall behind. We may pursue after relationships. I just want to be with somebody. I want to feel loved. I, I don't want to be alone at night. I, I just want somebody's eyes on me. But, but what about God? What about the love of Christ? What about having a relationship with God and spending time with him and getting to know him and to talk to him in the midnight hour? Uh, we may pursue the next high or the next drunken state to erase the pain and to numb the pain and the hurt that I feel on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm trying to numb myself, but I wake up the next day feeling worse than when I started. We pursue these things and then we wonder, why am I so tired? Why am I so unfulfilled? We pursue the next big thing. Uh, what will fulfill this emptiness inside? It seems like I just can't get enough. A place of desperation. A place where I pursue the things of life and I'm just not satisfied. Seems like this emptiness on the inside that I'm trying to fulfill cannot be fulfilled by the things of this world. Well, brother and sister, I come to tell you today that the only thing that can fill the void on the inside is Jesus himself. He left the space. He left an emptiness. He left the void on purpose. Something only he can fulfill. Amen. And I have to have the mindset that to, against all the odds, against all the pressure, against what I see on TV, against mortgage rates increasing, against inflation rising, that I have to have the mind that I refuse to get caught up in the pursuits and the chase of the things of this world at the expense of making it to heaven. I have to have a mind that I'm going to let God satisfy my needs. I have to have a mind that the things of this world are really of no eternal value. I have to have a mind that I won't allow anything to come between me and my God. I have to have a mind that I am willing to say goodbye to the things that are not like Christ. I have to have a mind to let go of some relationships because not every relationship is a good relationship. Sometimes you have to cut people off if it means that it's going to come between me and serving God. There's some people that will lie on you, some people that will cheat on you, some people that will steal on you, some people that have no good interest in you walking with God and make it their mission to take you out of the way of you making it to heaven. But is it worth the cost? Is it worth the relationship? Is it worth the friendship? Is it worth holding on to? This is the question that we have to ask ourselves today. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Man, I have to have a mind to habits. I have to have a mind to let go of whatever hinders me from making it to heaven. Amen. I mentioned that we may pursue after the things of this world. I, I mentioned some of the things that we would pursue after. But what does it look like to pursue after God? When I pursue after God, my attention is on making it to heaven. When I pursue after God, I place emphasis on living holy. I don't want to sin. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to cuss. 
I don't want to lie. I don't want to steal. I don't want to fornicate. I don't want any alcohol. I don't want the cigarette. And I don't want any wrongdoing in my life. And you may be wondering today, how can I get to that point? Well, I come to tell you on today that you can get to a point uh, to where you don't care, hallelujah, to sin anymore. You don't care to drink alcohol anymore. You don't care to smoke anymore. You don't care to lie with that man or that woman anymore. You don't care to do those things because the focus, the emphasis, the importance is on God. When God saves you, when you are baptized in the name of Jesus and you are filled with the Holy Ghost, Jesus, Jesus washes all the way the sins of my past and it gives me power through the Holy Ghost to live a life above sin. Hallelujah. And many of us have been in that place. Many of us have reached the point of desperation that I recognize that I'm pursuing, that I'm chasing, that I'm hungry after the things that really don't matter. At the end of the day, I know that I came into this world naked and naked shall I return as Job had said that I cannot I take anything with me when I leave this earth but there's something more we don't live just to live this life but we are living for eternity we are living so that we can make it to heaven we are living so that we can get up out of here we are living because there is something more there's something greater in store hallelujah you might have to go through some pain right now you might have to go through some sickness you might have to go through some tests and some trials and it seems like on this year the fire is hotter than it was on last year. My car is breaking down. It seems like I can't even hardly make the mortgage payment. It seems like, hallelujah, troubles on my job coming to me left and right. But my brother and my sister, I come to tell you that there is hope. Hallelujah. There is hope because there is eternal life. Hallelujah. I'm living to make it to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when I pursue after God I am willing to sacrifice for him I could be working overtime but to be in church is more important I could be sleeping but I need to get up in prayer I could be on Facebook but I need to get in the book hallelujah in the scriptures so much negativity plaguing the internet today so many articles hallelujah that will get you distracted that will have you down a rabbit hole feeling like there's no hope but I'm thankful on today that I don't have to stay focused on the negativity I don't have to stay focused on things that will get me depressed I don't have to stay focused on the things that will get me anxious I don't even have to be fearful because God when he comes in and he changes and turns my life around I've got a reason to live beyond this life because there is more more in the life to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When I pursue after God, I am willing to suffer for him. Lord, you suffered for me. So whatever test and trial I've got to go through, I know that you are with me. I preached on one time that God's got your back. I think about the Hebrew boys. When they were in the fire, God didn't stand out of the fire, but he got right there in with them. God will be on your side as you go through God will be there as your strength he'll be there as your comfort he'll be there as your hope he'll be there as your deliverer God will make a way out of no way when I pursue after God my desires are more like his I desire to be righteous I desire to be sin free I desire to be in church I desire to be clean I desire to do what it takes whatever I've got to give up heaven is cheap at any cost whatever I've got to go through Lord I will endure for he that endure it to the end the same shall be saved we have to choose to pursue God today in a world where less and less people are attending church in a world where evil is becoming worse and worse in a world where violence is increasing in a world where turmoil is around the corner my focus must be on Jesus my pursuit must be on Jesus my priority must 
be on Jesus. We have to have our mind made up to put God first. Nothing is more powerful than a made up mind just to serve God, just to live for him, just to seek him, just to pursue him day in and day out. If you got to take it one day at a time, my brother, take it one day at a time. If you got to take it one day at a time, my sister, take it one day at a time. Don't let the cares of this life drown you out. Don't let the cares of this life cause you to be miserable. If we got to get down in prayer and cast these cares at his feet, we ought to cast the cares right at his feet. And when I think about the glory of God, when I think about heaven, nothing in this life is worth not making it. If I got to give it up, help me to give it up. If I got to get my mind right, help me to get my mind right. If I got to get my thoughts in order, help me to get my thoughts in order. If there's some things, Lord, that you don't like about me, take it out, oh God. Cleanse me on the inside so I can walk right, so I can talk right, so I can live right. Ah, oh, Jesus is my prime concern. Jesus is the more important matter. He is the weight over everything else. God has to be first. Pleasing Jesus is more important than pleasing myself. Following Jesus is more important than following this world. Living for Jesus is more important than living in sin. All other distractions have got to go. Tell somebody on your left. Tell somebody on your right. It's got to go. Every distraction today that keeps me from getting to the place that I need to be with God has got to go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Let the anxiety go in the name of Jesus. Let the depression go in the name of Jesus. Let fear go in the name of Jesus. Let being overworked go in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna Help us, Jesus. All other distractions have got to go. No man is worth missing out on heaven for. No woman is miss worth missing out on heaven for. No job is worth missing out on heaven for. No lack of forgiveness is worth missing out on heaven for. No cussing is worth missing out on heaven for. No gambling is worth missing out on heaven for. I heard the preacher say, and I'll say it once again heaven is cheap at any cost heaven is going to cost us something but at whatever it costs my brother, my sister keep pursuing it keep your focus and your attention on it put it on the top of your list I can't do that today I got to spend some time with God I can't go there because it's going to hinder me and God I can't be talking to her because it's distracting me from where I need to be. I can't pursue that because I know that it's going to make conflict between me and my God. It'll be worth the sacrifice for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We might have to suffer a little while. We might have to go through sometimes. It might not feel good. It might not be a cakewalk, but if I can make it to heaven to see his face in glory, it'll be worth it all. Oh, whatever I've got to go through, this place is not my home. I am just passing through. Earthly treasures soon will fade, but my hope is in you. My hope is in Jesus. My hope's not in the car. My hope is not in my friends. My hope's not even in my family. But my hope is in Jesus. The one that satisfies my thirst. The one that will save your soul. The one that will deliver. The one that will set you free. The one that will bring you out. I've got to make it. I'm ready to make it. I'm in 
determined to make it whatever I got to do. I'm ready to get up out of here. You want to turn to your neighbor and just ask the question, are you prioritizing him? Hallelujah, are you ready to make it? Are you ready to see his face in glory? Are you ready to make heaven your home? Are you ready for more? Are you ready to get what God desires for you to have? What we have in this earth is only here for a little while. It's only here. It's only temporary. But I just encourage you today, don't let a little difficulty keep you from eternity. Don't let the doubters keep you from seeing him. Don't let the past keep you from getting to heaven. Don't let not let the Holy Ghost and not having the Holy Ghost keep you from heaven. Don't let not having baptism in Jesus' name keep you from making it to heaven because you can have both today. Heaven is for you, my brother. Heaven is for you, my sister. If you just keep saying, if you just keep holding on, if you just keep the focus where it ought to be, if you keep on prioritizing, if you keep on pursuing, if you keep on keeping on, God will save you. God will deliver. He will set free. Focus, pursue, and prioritize heaven. Focus, pursue, and prioritize heaven. Amen. Hard work is good. Industry is good. Goals are good to have. We have to occupy until he comes. But in no way is all that good if it comes at the expense of my salvation. Some of us are carrying an unnecessary weight, an unnecessary burden, trying to pursue after the things of this life. Amen. Some of us are doing it because we think that that equals a good life. If I have a nice car, nice house, if I have additional luxuries, we think that that equals a good life, but no life is worth living without Jesus. Because there are some who don't even have a roof over their head. There are some who don't even have filter or running water. sitting here under the sound of 
my voice right now. And you know that there is more that God can do for you. If you know that, you know what? I haven't been making God a priority. God, if I was honest, God is not really the head of my life right now. But I desire for him to be. I desire for him to change me. I desire for him to lift me up out of my situation, to make me new. As our altar workers move into place, I just encourage you to come down to this altar right now. I just encourage you to push. Amen. We've all had to come down this way. We have all had to go down this road. We have all had to make the decision that, you know what? I want more for my life. There is more. is open. My brother, my sister, if you desire just to come down for prayer right now. Amen. Prayer never hurt anyone. If you just need strength right now, I just encourage you to come down to this altar. Amen. Amen. You don't have to be embarrassed. Amen. You don't have to amen, be ashamed at coming down to get what God desires for you to have. He desires for you to have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a gift. Did you know that? The Holy Ghost is a gift. And God wants to give you that gift. God just wants you to have that gift. It's a free gift. All we have to do is believe on him. Believe that it is for me. Salvation is for me. Turn away from those things that are not like God leaving behind the things that we don't even really like. Being baptized in the name of Jesus and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is what God has for you today. This is a place to get what you have come for. Amen.
everybody in prayer. Amen. Let us bow our heads at this time. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we just praise you because you are a good God. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You're worthy of all the praise. Lord, we thank you for the word of God which we have heard on today and we ask you, O oh God, that you would hide this word in our heart that we might not sin against you, O oh Lord. Touch any sick bodies, Lord Jesus. Touch anybody that is weary in their mind, O oh Lord. Bless, Lord, these souls that are here on today, Lord. Let your blood cover, let your blood protect, O oh God. Even as we leave this place, Lord, let us not depart from your presence. Lord, bless anybody that may be watching on the live stream. Touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them strength right now, like only you can, O oh God. Lord, you're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor, and you're worthy of the praise. Everybody ought to shout in Jesus' name. In Jesus' 